Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in and joining me as I explore the amazing, incredible, diverse, interesting wide world of pens. And you see two fine examples of this wide world rotating on a turntable held up by crabs. And they have to be strong crabs because these are heavy pens. They're over 60 grams. I'm very fortunate to have had these pens sent to me for review. They are available on Amazon. Here's the listing, and I'll put a link in the video description. But I think we need to dive into these pens because they have some very interesting characteristics, and they have a very interesting nib. For those that always are looking for a different type of nib, this one will suit the bill. We're going to zoom in a little bit because... There's a, really a lot of detail in these pens. Extremely well made, as we've come to expect recently from these commemorative pens made in China. So watch them swirl around, turn around, and Mr. Crab will give you a winky wink and we'll dive in. Stay tuned. So these two pens have a lot of features in common, but there's some very interesting detail differences starting with the finial at the top of the cap it's easy to tell the bamboo is the silver colored trim and the other wood is the gold colored trim the clips are the same except for their color the cap band here is also the same except for the color but the Chinese writing opposite the portrait of Confucius is different. I'll see if I can get some translations. And if we flip it over, we'll see that there's two renditions of Confucius. And I'm certain the other pens would have different renditions. The wood is extremely nice, well done, feels good in the hand. It's that warm feeling of wood that we're all familiar with. And the end of the pen the barrel here is the same on both pens if we take off the barrel and it's not too many turns to get it off we'll see they've continued on with the silver tone and gold tone theme to the nib to the section I like again that little Greek motif uh, towards the end of the section there's that o-ring so when you screw down the cap you get a nice good feeling as you tighten up against the o-ring and there's the Duke there in 551 on the other side. So they labeled the pen appropriately. And it's interesting they put it on that band at the bottom of the barrel between the barrel and section. When you unscrew it, the threads stay in the barrel. And it unscrews. You got a nice little converter there. And the metal on the converter also matches the whole metal theme color theme throughout the pen. All, everything is very, very well made. The threads engage well. It's definitely not a pen for the lighthearted and not a pen for somebody who likes their pens light. But I think it's a rewarding writing experience and it's certainly visually very interesting. It's always interesting how pens are branded. The crown, the Duke logo, is at the end of the clip. And then Duke is on that band at the bottom of the barrel. And these are multi-threaded. They take a little bit over one turn to take off the cap, which is really excellent. And depending upon how you start the threading, the Duke will line up or it will be somewhere else. Really nice attention to detail. Well done, pens. One thing about reading other reviews is I realized that this has three tines, two slits like a music nib would. It's not as apparent as you might think it would be, but it's definitely there. And it definitely increases ink flow. Kudos. First food day triple tine that I've seen. So after seeing so many posts on social media about people who get pens, ink them up, and they don't write consistently, I will show again what I do with every pen 
before I ink it up is I use this syringe. You can get them many different ways in many different places. This is one from Radio Shack and it had an extension on it for removing flux. But it fits very, very well on most sections. We stick it in a mild soapy water, extract some air, pull up some water, and then when that's done, we lift it up and expel the water. Nice flow. And then I flush in clean water after this. Again, every pen, new or old, barred or blue, I flush it before I ink it. Just common pen maintenance for me. So here's writing with this Fude nib. It's one of the better Fude nibs I've ever used. If you hold it at a normal angle, it's about a broad to a double broad. If you just go up a little bit more in angle, you get almost like a medium line. It feels good on the paper. As you probably heard, it's very smooth and one would expect that with a nib like this. Puts down a decent amount of ink, but not overly wet. Here's some of those horizontal lines when you're at a lower angle. It's easy to color in with this. You know, the Fude nib is supposed to simulate a brush pen, and this certainly does meet that criteria. Definitely not one for reverse writing, at least this nib with this ink doesn't work well. But the thing to keep in mind is a Fude nib is an acquired experience. It's something you need to practice. But you can be rewarded with some very interesting writing, drawing, or sketching with the Fude nib. Sure, I've disassembled the bamboo version, and this is as far as I'm going to take it. One of the things I want to show you is that this upscale converter, nice metal end, nice silicone end there that attaches to the section. This unscrews easily, and obviously, I will remove the spring because I think it's doesn't do the purpose of breaking up the tension of the ink and it really makes cleaning out changing the ink a pain because you got to flush many many times to get the ink out of that spring. Here's the all metal section. Again really like the attention to detail with that kind of like Greek design there. The nib does not pull out the nib unit does not unscrew. If you look in here, you'll see a little dab of glue around there. So when they screwed in the nib unit, it's glued in place so it won't unscrew. But this is a unique nib. Swapping it out is not an option. To me, if you're going to buy this pen, you need to really enjoy and like this extreme Fude nib. So this is the ink that called out to me. Cafe Crema from Robert Oster. I expect some interesting shading with that Fude nib. Let me show you my filling process. As we can see, the bottle is a little bit less than half full. So we're going to have to insert that section pretty well into the bottle. So we start with the piston all the way down. We insert the assembly all the way in. And it's not much place so we'll do one up we'll take a look and we got a pretty full fill with one up but we always do three of these because I want to flush that nib and feed well with the ink I flushed it with soapy water rinsed it with regular water but I just want to make certain the writing experience is as good as it can be and to take a few minutes to do that and you can see that metal section not much ink to wipe off. So here's just a short comparison of 
the Duke pen with the Pelican M800, and the M800 looks small when compared to the Duke. And here's your Lamy All Star and your Pilot Metropolitan, just to put things in perspective. This pen is substantial in both length and girth. So now it's time for some editorial comments, some dimensions. Here they are. Keep in mind this is a big pen. It's a heavy pen. The other thing to keep in mind is, is that this pen was occasionally sold in a box. It almost doubles the price of the pen, but the box is a really upscale high high-end box, so if you look around, you might be able to find that. The other thing to keep in mind is this pen has been around for over a decade. I found um, an Anderson's pen review. Uh, Brian uh, did a review of the pen, and I'll put a link in the video description. There's also a great video from an artist who draws with the pen, and that link is also in the video description. So if we put this pen in our hand again, again, the cap comes off in just a little over one turn. And even though it's a heavy pen, it feels good in the hand. Nice balance. And that section is a little slippery, but not really that much. And it's a really decent diameter. So it feels good in the hand. And I'm not going to post it because it becomes extremely long, extremely back-weighted, and certainly not something you'd want to do. You need a lot of fine control to really get the best use of that incredible Fude nib on this pen. So we're going to do a little bit of final writing before we say adieu. So one of the things that I've noticed after writing for this nib is that it likes pressure. Maybe those uh, three tines have a little bit to do with that. I've never had any ink starvation. Or the nib is not dried out. I've only had it a few days. But it's certainly a very interesting and unique writing experience. And the pen certainly fits into that interesting and unique category. I don't have any other pen that's quite like it. So just keep in mind if this is something you'd like to do, you know, purchase a pen like this, it's going to require, unless you're experienced with using a Fude nib, it's going to require some effort on your part to get this nib to perform like you like. And it does work for writing, but it certainly works very, very well for drawing. We've reached the end of this video. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. As my handwriting degrades over the camera. Hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens, exploring the wide world of pens, finding what makes you happy and makes you write more, draw more, sketch more, or doodle more. Whoever you put ink on some surface, enjoy it. So we reach the end of this video. If I pay more attention, I can write a little bit better. And we're going to say bye. Until next time. Yeah, Cafe Crema Inc. works well. <laughs>